Mm-hmm. Yeah, very much agreed. And since you are, you know, America is selling a very, you know, data driven, metric driven um, platform, and we love getting into metrics. And so I'm really curious with a lot metrics of. Happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Matt, put on your metrics app, please, for this question. Um, <laughs> what metrics are you finding uh, are providing, like, you know, maybe outsized impact for people who are using DevLake um, or, or, or your even the proprietary platform as well? Yeah, um, so there's so many answers to that, and I'll try and organize them. Um, so I think in the open source conversation, one dashboard that we built with the community for DevLake that has really seemingly been a needle mover for a lot of projects is um, what we like to refer to as like the developer experience dashboard. And that's focused on metrics related to responsiveness, um, like how quickly are issues answered, how quickly are they resolved, what percentage of PRs are properly resolved, um, how many PRs actually make it all the way to the end and into production. Um, Metrics related to that um, have been, I think, really empowering for maintainers and kind of open source leaders. Um, And we found that that's also been a key piece for kind of enterprise kind of closed source companies that are engaging with open source. They love this dashboard because I think it helps them to understand on a high level, like the the health of the community as measured by how responsive it's being. Um, So that's that's certainly one that we've found has been really exciting. We've also found a tremendous amount of excitement and traction from the the Dora framework. Um, You know, DevOps research um, acquired by Google became this kind of gold standard for assessing DevOps effectiveness. Four key metrics, you know, two categories, right? Velocity and stability. Um, We could talk about that in detail if we want to. Um, But we've we've found that there's been a great appetite from many companies uh, who are looking to a, just get a better read on their own processes, um, figure out, you know, do some benchmarking, figure out if they're performing at the level they think they are, and if not, why not? Um, those Dora metrics have been a real kind of game changer, and we've we've found that companies are using that as a starting place, and it's a great foundation to start digging deeper. Um, so Can you just really quickly describe what the Dora metrics are for those that don't know. Yeah. So um. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know either, Bobby. So don't uh, don't feel so bad. Even though yeah, so I have the hat on, I don't know. So I'll I'll do a I'll do my best to kind of do like a quick uh, two minute TED talk here on this um, for our listeners. So so the the Dora framework um, comes from a research group that was ultimately acquired by Google, um, and these researchers were trying to answer the question of, you know, how do you kind of predict the success of a software team? Um, How do you determine whether they're doing a good job from a delivery perspective? Um, And what are the metrics that correspond to that? And they researched uh, well over 10,000 teams. Um, They say so, and I believe them. Um, And the, the kind of the result of that research became the DORA framework. And the DORA framework is four key metrics, and it's focused on two key areas, um, the velocity of the team and the stability of the outcomes. And those four key metrics are essentially kind of deployment frequency, uh, change failure rate, um, how quickly you're responding to change failure. Um, And in essence, what the framework is really kind of doing is, and it's the reason I like it is, I always talk about how it's sufficiently abstract that it's difficult to game. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're just looking to reduce change failure rate, right? um, There's not many behaviors that you can do to push that metric, they're gonna be bad things, right? Um, Whereas if you simplify it to the most simple possible thing, right? Of saying, we're defining success by lines of code. Well, surely you're gonna find people just finding ways to be more verbose and split things apart produce more lines. Um, but it's hard to game a metric like that. And that's one thing I like about it. The, the other thing that I love about it is it's um, it's also sufficiently actionable, which is this almost like impossible middle point where, you know, it's sufficiently abstract that it's not going to lead to kind of perverse behaviors, um, but it's sufficiently actionable that it's not going to just be this thing that you're like, oh, great. Like we have 600,000 units of money. Like, what do we, is that good? Is it a lot? Is it, you know, um, 
it, it's something that's actionable enough where they can see here's where we stand and we have some good ideas as to how we can respond to it. Um, so, so that's kind of a fast and furious kind of explanation of the Dora framework. Um, but it's, it's something that I think drives a culture of improvement. Um, it's, I think, well understood by the community in, in general. Um, and if it's not well understood once they dive into it, I think it's something that they can feel comfortable and confident in seeing that it's been kind of vetted by the best in the business. It's, it's kind of um, accepted and evangelized by some smart people. Um, it's not perfect, right? Nothing is, but it, of course. for us, it's been this kind of a magic kind of intersection of all the right things. Um, 